Let's take a look at modifiers and the modifier stack. First of all, let's select all this stuff, control A, and then we're gonna hit delete. So we're gonna make a new object just to make things a little bit easier. So I'm gonna make a cylinder just somewhere close to the middle there is fine. And I'm gonna apply a modifier. So I'm gonna start out with a bend modifier because that's always fun and it illustrates our purposes nicely. As I adjust the angle of the bend, I'll see the gizmo, that's that orange box around the object. So if I look here at the sub object of the bend, I see the gizmo in the center. So these two things are something that are actually adjustable. We're gonna take a look without worrying about that for now. So as I adjust the angle here and increase the angle and push that object further and further, let's make this full screen, Alt W, I see that the gizmo itself is smoother than the object. The only thing we can do is go back to the cylinder level so I can go below the bend modifier and increase the height segments of the cylinder in order to make sure that it's nice and smooth as it bends. So then the bend modifier, as I adjust this, allows me to also add other modifiers to the stack. Let's say a taper modifier. The taper modifier has this orange box, that's its gizmo. As I increase the amount of the taper, I see the object is stretching out. Maybe that doesn't seem quite right. So let's reorder these modifiers. So I'm gonna grab the taper and just drag it below the bend. Now let's turn the bend off for a second. So that taper modifier, as I adjust the amount now, and even though the gizmo looks a little off, it knows where its center is supposed to be. So as that object tapers now, let's actually go back to the cylinder and adjust the radius there to make it a little smaller to begin with. Then let's go back to the taper, adjust the amount. Then we'll go back to the bend, turn the bend back on. And then that object looks significantly different than when the taper happened after the bend. So same settings, but depending on the order of those modifiers, definitely a different end result. So different modifiers, depending on how you order them in the stack, will have a drastically different effect on your objects. The nice thing about the stack in 3ds Max is that it allows you to go to different levels of the stack and continue to make adjustments. So I can even still go back to that cylinder, adjust the radius of the cylinder, the height of the cylinder, the height segments to make it smoother, and even the number of sides to smooth it out this way so we can make sure it's nice and smooth. And then we can go ahead and explore and look around at all kinds of different modifiers and see what they do. Some of them are gonna make sense, some of them really aren't. Another cool one is the FFD modifier, so let's do a three by three. Now let's actually go ahead and delete the bend and the taper. So now this modifier, as I look at it, has a sub-object of a couple different things here. The control points are things that I can get to and directly move to stretch out the object. So there's a lot of different stuff that we can start to do just by manipulating the vertices by hand. So let's go back to the cylinder and actually put on some cap segments. By adding some geometry to that cap, we'll allow those deformations from the control points here to do a little bit more to the object. So we can grab all of those at once and move them to the side. Another cool thing about all this, it can also all be animated. So the movement of these vertices, these control points over time, can actually be animated and we can do some pretty cool stuff with our geometry. So the modifiers and modifier stacks are actually a pretty powerful feature of 3ds Max. The fact that you can reorder and actually go above and below different modifiers to make adjustments to your geometry is pretty powerful.